terms of setup, as we said, there was a little bit too much knee flexion. You see these two here now, the right hand one, a little bit taller. Ideally, we could get a little bit more tilt, just a little bit, I'm actually going a bit too far there, but a little bit more tilt in the spine, just so the shoulders get nearer the ground. But if you're flexing your knees as much as that, your spine's always going to be too upright, okay? Yeah. And then when your spine is too upright here, and you swing the golf club, that left arm gets low down here, and the club face now, if you can see, is in what we call a closed position. At this point, your club should be pointing more sort of down this way in line with your left arm. The fact it's pointing over there means it's quite okay. a long way close. Hence why when you get a reasonable shot sometimes, it does hook a lot to the left there, okay? Yeah. But that's something you know a bit more detail to as we go through, so on bit by bit. Okay, but swing-wise now, we go through these sort of positions here now. That's why I said I'll go good, bad, good, bad, so you can feel the difference. There's kind of good, okay? There, that'd be perfect, if that's better. Then we said sort of drop it down into what we feel about there. Not a big change when you think about it, you just bend your knees, your knees are going forward maybe sort of three or four inches, mm. but it felt to you like a massive like squat yeah. down and drop. But just that subtle change there in terms of your spine, that's kind of more where you are there, as you can see. And then you go back to good again, and you sort of shuffle around and try and find where good and bad was again. But identifying which of the two is which kind of, that's important to the DH, so you know what good feels like, what bad feels like. Yeah. You can identify the feeling of what wrong is. So when you're on the golf course, you can go, well, hang on, this feels wrong because you know what wrong feels like, yeah. okay? Yeah. So get in that position there now, and then as we said, as the club goes back now, we're hinging the wrist up, so that club now going through your right arm there, right forearm, as the club's starting to hinge up now, it's a more upright club. Look at that left arm there now across your shoulders in comparison to yeah, that. Sure. Okay. Much higher left arm now. Your left knee isn't bending quite so much because it's not bent at setup quite so much, so it's a much more stable position there now. You hinge your wrist more, hence why the club now sort of gone out of view there, it's actually gone to sort of the, the light there, because that's where your club was before. You now hinge your wrist, the club's going to go further. So you're going to create more power by hinging better. That's going to be another benefit, obviously. And with the angle of the club coming down to the golf ball now, you're able to bring that golf club down sort of halfway back into the impact now. That club now, you can see, is pointing at the golf ball. We're going to swing that club to the golf ball. If the club was to come in too flat, that's where the club's going to swing over here somewhere, above the golf ball, thus missing it or topping it, or requiring a a drop into the ground yeah, to yeah. try and make contact, which we don't want to be doing that all the time. This one just comes back down. You can just see sort of where your hands are there now. If you go that to the golf ball, your hands swing down that yellow line there, mm -hmm. and the club just unwinds to the golf ball. So a very sort of efficient movement there at the golf ball, kind of as if you're sort of straight up here going and doing this, as yeah. if you're hammering a nail into a bit of wood. You want to be going from in here trying to loop it in there, you're just in a straight line. That way. If the other swing is a circle around us, looking this way, there's a straightness in that line of the angle of that club going back in the goal. Well, that's all being created by a better left arm position, getting your left arm higher. Now it can follow down that track. If your left arm's too low, you can't get to then try and re wrap your left arm over the top of that. Well, if you're coming down in from here now, as you can see, your left arm's underneath. So trying to get back onto that angle is going to be tough. Yeah. You're then trying to, again, compensate or judge something. So get the, thim, the thumbs hinging up, that's going to get the club face working better and your left arm a lot higher. Then as we come into the golf ball now, we can get down to the golf ball. Again, good strike. The reason why some of the shots go left, as we said, the club gets a little bit in this what we close position, which we'll show you in more detail now. And if the lower half doesn't work so well, the lower half stopping there quite a bit, yeah. the top half now sort of overtake the left arm, sort of pulls, the left arm popping out, pulls through, you sort of tweak it a bit to the left on occasion. Okay? But I think for me, it's more focused on getting a consistent strike. Once you start getting a more confidence now with hitting a ball up in the air somewhere, rather than potentially sort of going here, there, and zigzag all over the place, yeah. then you can start working on the body working better mm -hmm. rather than trying to do too much too soon. Yeah. At the end of the day, the golf swing starts from we go from when the swing starts at about 18 or 17, 17.62. So you've made contact by about 19 seconds, probably. 18.82, so one and a half seconds most. What can you think about in one and a half seconds? I think thumbs up and the left arm across your chest is more than enough, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Get that sort of synced up and in a sort of a muscle memory. Mm -hmm. A good draw you can practice, actually, let's just make some swings up against the wall there. So I'll show you how far from the wall you need to be, so you have to get the figure of the arm going up a bit higher, not too far behind you. So if you imagine there was a wall, for example, sort of back here, yeah. your club would sort of swing back through and miss that wall. A bit too close, to be fair. You're going up there, you just about miss the wall, as you can see, just about. By the edge of the screen would be about where the wall would want to be, so that club can go up there. You see on this side, the club now has sort of gone through that wall and yeah. disappeared out behind you. Yeah. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Good. So